Philippines, particularly Metro Manila and its surrounding regions, is rapidly growing. The country's economy grew significantly in the past two decades, with its average annual growth rate of gross domestic product increasing by 4.7% from 1994 to 2014. Naiya is the main gateway airport of the Philippines, and it is close to reaching its capacity limits. It handled approximately 34 million passengers in 2014, with its average annual growth rate increasing by 6.2% from 1994. Clark International Airport, on the other hand, is far behind to Naiya in terms of the number of passengers, and the number of passengers has declined in the past few years. It handled 1.5 million passengers per annum in 2012, but only 1 million in 2014. The low number of passenger levels is due to lack of convenient access going in and out of Metro Manila. The fact that no metropolis exists near the area. Without a new airport, the country's rapidly growing air demand will be curtailed. Roadmap study in 2013 showed that it is necessary to build a new Manila International Airport. However, given the new airport's huge land size requirement and limited land space in Metro Manila, the new airport is more appropriately built offshore. In Southeast Asia, there exist large size of gateway airports such as Suva Mabumi International Airport, Kuala Lumpur International Airport. In terms of the offshore airport, Hong Kong International Airport, Kansai International Airport, and Shubu International Airport exist. Prospective site for New Manila International Airport were initially screened to five offshore sites. This includes two locations in Sangli Point, central portion of Manila Bay, San Nicolas Shores, and western portion of Laguna de Bay. Sangli Point Option 1 is located approximately 20 kilometers southwest of Metro Manila and almost parallel to the southern part of Cavite Peninsula. Sangli Point Option 2 is located parallel to the existing runway at Sangli Point Air Base. Central portion of Manila Bay site is located at the eastern side of Bacoor and Canacao Bay, while at the north of this site's area is the South Harbor, North Harbor, and Manila International Container Terminal. San Nicolas Shoals is located approximately 25 kilometers southwest of Metro Manila and is almost parallel to the coastline of Rosario and Tanza. Western portion of Laguna de Bay is approximately 3 kilometers from the coast of Paranaque City. For fast and easy access from Metro Manila to New Manila International Airport, access road will be developed and railway could also be planned. For example, in Sangli Point Option 1, an access road would be connected to the end of Cavite Expressway and the beginning of Cavite Laguna Expressway. Access railway could be planned in the future to be connected to LRT Line 1 South Extension, proposed Mega Manila Subway Line and North-South Railway, as well as FTI Bus Terminal. The key findings for five prospective new airport sites are as follows. For Sangli Point Option 1, the instrument flight procedures can be established, but coordination with relevant authorities on risks of Petron oil terminal in Rosario might be required. For Sangli Point Option 2, the instrument flight procedures would conflict with Malacanang restricted airspace. For central portion of Manila Bay, possible conflict with Port of Manila operations, development within its surroundings must be properly controlled. For San Nicolas Shoals, the instrument flight procedures would conflict with Malacanang restricted airspace, moderate or less feasible from surrounding land use and urban development viewpoint. For western portion of Laguna de Bay, less involuntary resettlement but high platform construction cost is expected due to poor subsurface soil condition. Excessive high peak ground acceleration is anticipated in case of earthquake. Based on findings, Sangli Point Option 1 has been rated as feasible and be subjected to further detail examination. Western portion of Laguna is subjected to the confirmation of cost estimate based on actual technical data in the next step. The other three options, Sangli Point Option 2, Central Portion of Manila Bay, and San Nicolas Shoals are rated less feasible. Further detailed study will need to be undertaken to confirm the results of the survey. So how can land be reclaimed for the offshore airport? General process of land reclamation consists of soil improvement, seawall construction, and reclamation work. This process was done in Japan's Kansai International Airport and Chubu International Airport. Soil Improvement 
Existing ground under the sea often consists of soft layer. In this case, soil improvement is carried out in order to make strong layer to support heavy materials. Vertical drain method drives drain material into cohesive soil layer by shortening drainage distance of water trapped in cohesive soil layer and accelerating consolidation. Seawall construction. Before dumping fill material into the reclamation area, a seawall needs to be constructed to prevent diffuse, muddy water and fall down of reclaimed area by wave. A gentle slope type of seawall with dissipating block is recommended for New Manila International Airport at Manila Bay based on the study. To construct a sloping seawall, a quarry run is dumped into the water, put correctly by machine or manually, and finally wave dissipating blocks are put to the side of the wave. Reclamation work. After the seawall was constructed, reclamation work starts. On the reclamation procedure done for Kansai International Airport in Japan, soil is dumped until minus 3 meters by barge, with opening mechanism at the bottom, then reclaimed until the maximum elevation of plus 9.5 meters by reclaimer barge. To withstand natural calamities such as tsunami, typhoon, and storm surge, the platform is reclaimed to the safety elevation with revetment. Also, for protection against liquefaction, dynamic compaction method will be used. A comprehensive environment management center would be established so that the environment around the new airport would be managed during airport construction. In case seawalls gentle slope, seaweed could be implanted so aquatic marine life could thrive. At an offshore airport, airport access facility would connect between shore and airport. Approximately 4 kilometers long access bridge was built at Kansai International Airport in order to cope with strong wind around the airport. Wind-resistant stability equipment and dynamic damper were installed as a vibration control facilities. Based on the result of wind tunnel experiment, they strengthened the safety of users during their usage of the airport access bridge and contribute to the resilience of the airport. Construction of an offshore airport involves large-scale construction and intricate process. There have been several offshore airports developed including Hong Kong International Airport as well as Kansai and Chubu International Airport. Accumulated knowledge and experience of Japan through the construction of these airports could be applied to the new Manila International Airport development. Maximum economic benefit will be achieved when the new Manila International Airport is built and more people would be able to conveniently travel for business or leisure, ultimately supporting economic growth. The new Manila
today, we open a new door for those who comes from the other side of the sea. A new door which opens to the sky and multiplies our horizon. You will witness a magnificent building completed through mankind's creativity and overcoming nature. Sang Li International Airport The Airport Terminal The terminal was inspired by the characteristic of the Philippine Eagle, for its outline that extends outward from central form in a radial manner and its capability to adopt and withstand the force of the wind. The concourse which consists of 68 air bridges and can accommodate an Airbus C380 aircraft which is the biggest commercial airplane at present. The control tower. This glass enclosed elevated structure is used for the visual observation and control of the air and ground traffic at an airport. The air traffic control unit monitors and directs the movement of aircraft on and around the airport. The roof garden is provided to improve the air quality and helps reduce noise within the area. The airport authority building. This independent entity is in charge with the operation and oversight of an airport or group of airports. These authorities are often governed by a group of airport commissioners, who are appointed to lead the authority by a government official. The multi-level parking. This facility features park and fly services, wherein customers can leave their vehicles on a daily weekly or monthly basis either for short-term or long-term parking at very reasonable rates. Parking Area Capture every moment and enjoy the beautiful landscape and mesmerizing water features with your family and friends. Rescue and Firefighting Facility an area which houses the rescue and firefighting team. Coast Guard Office Ferry Terminal A further means of transportation for people to arrive in the airport premises aside from land travel. Faster maintenance in bigger aircraft hangars The ultimate architectural work, created by combining technologies and innovation. The Sangli International Airport, is the result of the hard work and persistence of many people. To become an iconic structure, that will serve as the country's reflection to our economic growth and potential. The sea taught us, that the future is built every day from tide to tide. And us, stone by stone meter by meter, all together we opened the doors we needed so that nothing will stop us to become a great nation. Sangli International Airport